We tell the story now to almost all of our uh, incoming and prospective graduate students that, um, that we have these three proposals that is required for the, for the PhD. And uh, the first proposal is on your ongoing research topic. And the second proposal is off topic. That is, it's in a field that's uh, as far removed as you can imagine from your current research project. The second proposal is really a proposal to help them develop creativity in science and to think independently. And so uh, Jeremy Nathans is famous, uh, in fact infamous in our department because we use his proposal as an example to all of our incoming graduate students. In fact, we use it to recruit graduate students to the department. So when Jeremy was picking his topic, he was having conversations with Lubert Stryer and actually took a class from Lubert. And he came up with this idea to um, identify the molecular basis of, uh, of human color vision by starting with the cloning of a gene for black and white vision, basically, um, where the protein had already been identified, and then using that as a molecular probe to isolated, related, but different genes. And it was such a good idea that the committee of faculty to which he presented this proposal encouraged him to actually stop doing what he was doing as a graduate student and take this new project on. He not only identified the genes that encode the uh, black and white uh, vision receptors, but also went on to identify these um, homologous genes, related genes, that encode the red, green, and blue uh, color uh, detector sensors and then went on beyond that to show that um, people who are red-green colorblind, basically, are defective in their red and green uh, genes, and to show the molecular basis of the genetic changes that uh, have taken place in those individuals. It was a wonderful moment. He came to my office, and I'll never forget it. He said, I've got the genes for the color vision pigments. And so, you know, there are times um, in one's research career where you take great joy in something you hear from another scientist, and that was one of the moments. It's very rare that a graduate student can open up an entire field of research, uh, and, and even uh, more uh, unusual to, to basically do it uh, on their own in the lab. But that's exactly what, what, what Jeremy did. I've been very fortunate in uh, having wonderful mentors at every step in my career. When I got to Stanford, I was extremely lucky in being accepted into the biochemistry department, and in particular, being asked to join Dave Hognes' lab. Dave was a wonderful mentor. He was always there to hear whatever I had to say, uh, however well or ill thought out it was, and he had terrific ideas, a very deep thinker. Dave gave Jeremy the freedom to pursue a project that was really of uh, Jeremy's choosing, and Dave supported it greatly. And Lubert Stryer, who was my informal mentor, had many of those same characteristics. He was uh, insatiably curious, uh, excited by whatever others were doing, uh, which was an infectious enthusiasm, and I was really uh, just incredibly lucky to have both of them looking over me. I spent seven wonderful years at Stanford. I met my wife and got married there, and um, it was really an idyllic existence. The community of scientists there was really remarkable, uh, in particular in the biochemistry department led by Arthur Kornberg. There was a community that worked together, they got along wonderfully with each other, and I think there's an ethos at Stanford of uh, really going for the great experiment. Jeremy has carried out deep research that is highly original, enduring, extraordinarily significant. He's a scientist, scientist. He's very much in the mold, in, in the character of Arthur Kornberg and Paul Berg, and he has made really a fundamental contribution to our understanding of vision, to our understanding of neural circuitry. Not only is he a wonderful person, a very thoughtful and broad scientist, but an innovator and a pioneer. And uh, what we are, he is among 
uh, the alumni that we are the very most proud of in the Department of Biochemistry. So uh, it's difficult to imagine anyone uh, who would be more deserving of this honor than Jeremy Nathans.